Hello everyone, Adam the Ultimate Hoovian here, and welcome back to the Doctor Episode Reviews. Series 9 has officially begun, so we review Episode 1, The Magician's Apprentice. So without further ado, let's get straight into the episode. So we start off with this big, engaging, opening, epic, biggest war sequence you could ever imagine for an opening of Doctor Who. And there, we have a kid who is going to get infected by these hand mimes. These hands that are coming out the ground, and you just have to picture an eye. I should have put an eye on this hand to demonstrate that they are ha hand mimes, and they are going to pull him into the ground, just like they did to, to that shoulder, to, in to immediately introduce a threat to the story. Not the threat, because it turns out things are not what they seem. This boy, who isn't going to die today, or hopefully he isn't going to die today, turns out to be... Davros, Lord and Creator of the Dalek Fleet. Whoosh! It sort of feels like the Missy reveal. Oh my god, it's this recurring character. And then we have the zoom off of Capaldi's shock. Again! And guess what? This all episode also features Missy. Yeah, rehash much? I'd say so, really. Um. It is ironic how both Capo there's two shocked Capaldi moments or Capaldi look shock moments in about an, a couple episodes span of each other. These sort of big, huge things that have been going on. But yeah, after the title sequence, which is still out of sync, and it's got a new filter. That's nice. We see lots of planets. We see Calm, which looks really cool. Um, we see the Shadow Clock Commission with Jadoon and that woman again from Stolen Earth. And we see uh, blah, that bar, the, Mal Man Man the Maldovium, which I believe is the same place that River Song visited Dorium in the Pandorica Opens. And also in A Good Man Goes to War. The Moffatverse, where all these planets can exist in peace and harmony. And a reference every single, every single time that a big, huge climactic story. It's nice seeing the like ood and Sycorax in there, sort of old nostalgia monsters. I guess maybe it's their sort of way to celebrate ten years of modern home. Pardon me. And um, that was all really cool. And we are introduced to this character called Colony Saf, who was really, really cool. I'll sort of talk about him where he had this uh, this weird disfigured face that looked like elastic bands put on him and he sort of changed into this huge snake creature which was really cool um, and really creepy and threatening um, he was um, I was so glad that there's going to be some expansion on him in the next part because I thought he was really cool um, yeah that was that I mean, he, I mean he was really really good um, in the in, in the story so he was sort of a nice new uh, threat, um, but the way he's the Doctor. It's sort of the danger of the Doctor character that we sort of have. Some of the name of the Doctor is like, he must never go to Trenzalore, he must never do this. Danger is coming. Rehash. I don't know how many times I'm going to say rehash, but kind of is. But, you know. Uh, we'll get the, the, the king of rehash will come later. But as for now, um, we have uh, Clara reintroduced. Clara and, um, of course, Cole, she's still a teacher at Coho School. It's so funny, we see all these, like, space clips, and then there's just um, her with a bucket of, she has that she's doing bits of chewing gum. And she snogged Jane Austen. It's canon. Clara has snogged Jane Austen. Don't know what to think to that, but... Funny... No. Cute. Barely. But yeah, Clara at Coal Hill, she'd been called by Unit, and Unit need her. Because of course Unit need Clara, all, all mostly of the time. And shit's going on with planes stopping. Are the planes too close? What the fuck? But it turns out that there's a, a message. There's going to be this message on the computer. You know, it's gonna be, it's gonna come up on screen. Missy's back, and her head is projected. Oh, God, I can't, I can't even think. Oh no, 
See? This is what Doctor Who does to me. It fucking kills you. Like, that image was what was going on. It felt like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It felt like a Saturday morning cartoon. It was unrealistic as hell. I know planes, I mean, we had plane stopping. We thought that was that. Steve Moffat was going to top it with even more unrealism. I know it's a sci-fi show. I know, but you're on a for crash. <sighs> oh, God. But Missy invites Clara to Tenerife, of all places, and unit, uh, they shut down the area, it's quarantined, and Clara and Missy have a conversation. A n nice conversation. Your boyfriend, dead, I presume? Is dead, yes. You prick. But yeah, um, why didn't, why didn't you just say that? Yes, you, I know, you prick. Stuff up. Or something. Um, yeah, I quite like Michelle Gomez. There's a, there was some moments where I thought Michelle Gomez was decent in that conversation. Um, she's sort of showing her Scottish evilness, which I thought was not the master, but a good sort of villainess in general, but isn't the master in my eyes, but... There were some decent moments where she sort of, and she's clearly having fun, and that is what you need, you know. Although, it would have been fun if she was Stone Cold Dead Serious, if she was more of the master. Why did she have to be even more, uh, even maybe even more campy than John Sim or Alex McQueen, or masters from the past, really? I, I just don't get it, really. But, she was, I think Michelle Gomez was decent enough, but the writing for her was goddamn terrible. Um, but yeah. Clara, I, ca I can't describe her as of yet. I guess I'm going to have to go through the episode in my head thinking, right, here's sort of what's happening with these characters. Here's what I kind of think. Um, with a, Clara, in her tech savvy stuff, taps on computers. Where would the doctor be? Ah, there. And you, a clever girl, teleports to the medieval times. And there they are along with a whole group of medieval people and Boars is there from the Doctor's Meditation which was a decent enough prequel there were his axe and there you hear electric guitars and the, it's the Doctor with an electric guitar on a tank clearly Stephen Moffat has been taking inspiration from Mad Max um that was good the guitar stuff, he's a great guitarist that moment was good for a couple of minutes, and then he gets off the tank and tells terrible jokes. Oh, I I brought it for my fish, my fish, and yeah, the moment's kind of gone from there, and it it sort of goes on like the doctor playing pretty woman, good guitar skills, but my god, after a while, I mean after Connolly, I think uh, it really picks up when Connolly South comes, which again I said was he was cool in that. He was I really like Connolly South, really cool um sort of threat and. They had taken a spaceship to Scarrow. Oh, I do like though. I do like Capaldi's moments when he's like he sort of accepts it by the end. The snake sort of wrap around him, and um, as soon as Clara says, "Oh, take us as well," the Doctor's really like doesn't. He, of course, Mister the Doctor, he doesn't want them to be on board because they'll get in the way or they'll get killed or obviously, and it's sort of um, really. Uh, engaging to see the doc when you know they are in the room but dies. I thought it was kind of yep, they're probably gonna be exterminated, but they'll be brought back. But we'll still feel the doctor's pain, which I you know, in these situations, I, I it's decent enough. And I know it's been playing around for quite some time, but I like that. Yeah, that's quite cool. So they're on the spaceship and they're going to this. So <laughs> I don't even know why this is such a big shock. It's, oh, we're going to this hospital. And then it turns out to be a whole city. Why couldn't they just go to the city? For God's sake, you you, you knew that Scar that Scaro was still out there in Asylum of Bada Okay, let's not go there. But yeah, so they're there, um, and Dark the Doctor's reunited with Davros. And here we go. This is <laughs> Peter Capaldi and Julian Bleach are pitch perfect together, in my opinion. I think they are the thing that is carrying the episode, and it takes us this long 
too many plotting scenes, the ridiculously pretentious opening lot, and the guitar scene to get us to the most coolest part of the episode, undeniably, is Peter Capaldi and a return of Julian Bleach as Davros. Julian Bleach is a fantastic Davros. My second favourite, and of course my first, being the almighty powerful Michael Wisher in Genesis of the Daleks. But talking about Genesis of the Daleks, didn't you love the fan service? Did, um, when Davros says, did you rem remember our conversations? You have... Genesis, Resurrection, Revelation of the Daleks, Remembrance of the Daleks, and Stolen Earth Journeys, and all in the background. Um, hearing, hearing it is great. Um, um, sort of seeing it briefly on the screen, sort of, I was sort of, I was re-watching it thinking, oh, there, actually, I could sort of see Sylvester McCoy shouting a limited rice pudding in a screen, David Tennant and Colin Bacon, whatever. But then that kind of more close-up, that kind of more um, in-focus shot, where we see Tom Baker hold the two wires and say, if someone who knew the future pushed out a child to you and told you that that child would grow up totally evil, to be a ruthless dictator to destroy millions of lives, could you then kill that child? It's obvious that he is definitely taken a huge chunk of inspiration from Genesis of the Dark, the very first appearance of Davros, because of course that was really where, it all, where his story for us viewers and the Doctor began and Scar at that point in time, which, okay, cool, you've introduced that fan service, there's a bit of history, um, and it's fan serviced. Hence, why the episode got 4.54 million viewers. Oh dear. Oh no. That's... That's shocking. I didn't think Doctor Series 9 really had the biggest boost of, um, making, um, sort of, they didn't really go out their way to sort of promote it as well. I know they did the world tour last year and that was great. They didn't have to do a world tour, but something more of the lines of maybe a bit more advertising, a bit more trailers, maybe a bit more, maybe merchandise or something, maybe a cinema release, something would have probably made this, where we got a lot more views and got a lot more out of it to sort of get out, to get out there that Doctor Who was coming back. And sort of September 19th, uh, I guess the release date itself was sort of maybe in that, maybe it was sort of late, maybe late August, sort of leading into September would have been uh, the best way to sort of go about releasing the episode and stuff like that. But yeah, as I said, Peter Capaldi, Julian Peach, pitch perfect. So I'll sort of talk about the two individually now. Peter Capaldi, very good. Um, the, he's humorous, he delivers lines humorously and wonderfully, lines himself, but um, he's wonderful, he's he is displaying both uh, fear and anger and a lot of, he's really um, complex as the Doctor should be. He's clearly that hobo that we like. The 12th Doctor much? Yes, there is that bit where he sort of hugs Clara and it's sort of like, okay, so he does hug Clara. Now, I think it would have been good to see a bit more progression because only in Last Christmas was he fine with holding her hand. And I, it, it's a bit of a, it's a bit jarring to sort of go from Last Christmas to The Magician Apprentice in my mind. But yeah, that's that. Um, but he's brilliant in this, he's really good in this story. And I just, I think I can find, I will hopefully talk about his actions a lot more in The Witch is Familiar as it sort of really picks up his sort of uh, Doctor character arc through the whole two-part in the next part, of course. And, um... Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's great on the Scarrow scene in the, uh, when he's with the kid Davros. Um, uh, I thought those were probably some highlights in that. And Capaldi's great. Clara, ooh. Could, what could we say about Clara? She was meh in that story. She was sort of there to just be exterminated. Exterminated. Um sort of act like the what is really going on? She questions a lot of what's going on in this episode, which maybe it's not the best for it really, but um but for what she had, Common did it well. And really I do hope it's really the other stories that she sort of picks up a bit more. Um of course it's only the first episode of the series, so whatever. Um yeah, Missy was uh not people say it's an improvement. I don't think so. She's still sort of saying, this is sexy, this is, this is our flirting, this is our this. She's still that same person, but I think if played it a bit more straight, if sort of, you know, a bit more villainy, villainess, which maybe could happen in the next episode, 
you know, would make maybe notch up a bit above Dark Water and Death in Heaven. And considering Dark Water had a great opening 20 minutes, when Michelle Gomez came in there and Death in Heaven was so bad. What? And now we return to Scaro, the planet of the Daleks. And it looks great, apart from the obvious green screen when it is finally revealed that it is Scaro that they're on. And I quite like the fact that that, I, that head turn in the trailer was actually looking at a Dalek. I thought it, it would be the Doctor or someone, but it was a Dalek that looked like the headlights, right? What are they, bunny ears? How could you? It's a small fan detail and this is why we die because of Stephen Moffat's scripts. We die inside, or inside, not outside, but inside. There's a bit that is killed, but once they get into the Dalek control room, it looks great. The set itself is great, modern, and, and cool. You have loads of Daleks in there. You have classic Daleks from the 60s, which look brilliant. You have the special weapons Dalek, and I really like the return of the Supreme Dalek. I thought it was a great design in the Stolen Earth Journey's End episode, which Moffat was clearly also inspired for, from. There's a lot of stuff from um, Stolen Earth in there, the Shadow Proclamation, the Supreme Dark and Davros, so... And the music, of course, when they're on the planet, is the ah! It was also in Day of the Doctor, and that epic Dalek music that comes on when Daleks are Daleks and Daleks and Daleks. Ah, too many Daleks. Um, that kind of, that kind of seems, um, um, sort of missing Clara just saying, oh, good luck trying to exterminate that. Oh, and if you need the TARDIS, you're gonna need me. You're gonna need me to open the box and you have all the time and space to play with. But I was just there like, what the fuck's she on about? And the other Dalek's like, you know, I think we should exterminate her. No, hang on, hang on, I think we've got a point. No, I think we should exterminate her. Maximum extermination. Took you quite a while to exterminate them. But I do like the fact that Clara is stood still and she's in the room of Daleks. Um, Davros is like, oh, they have an instinct of killing, kill, kill, kill. I love that bit. I, I, I think I, that that bit was absolutely wonderful, and it portrays what the Daleks are. It's sort of like if anything that moves and that isn't them, it's brilliant. Well, that's really good. And Capaldi is begging and is shocked, but in order to save the friends, does he have the right? To get the gun and go exterminate the Davros once and for all. Pretty intense, although when you really think about it, it is questionable what that episode it is. There's going to be a cheap way out. He won't exterminate Davros because why would he? And it won't. And he wouldn't. And he wouldn't. And they Moffat probably wouldn't do what he did inside the Daleks and game changes of the Daleks. Forget the Doctor. Then remember. But yeah, that's the end of The Magician's Apprentice. Um, a pretty good, intense, beautiful looking story, and I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Yeah, wasn't brilliant. Capaldi was really good, I did enjoy him. I really liked the production, I really liked some aspects they introduced got Colony South, I really liked the Daleks, and for the most part there were some decent lines in there, and some good moments, isolated moments, but the rest, a bit lacklustre, a bit been there, done that, and a bit, and it kind of dragged a bit to sort of get to the, to that, to the good stuff, there was sort of, of course, what I mentioned before, the guitar scene, the joke, sort of the fish tank, and the Bill and Ted dude thing, went on for a bit too long, and stuff like that, and Clara unit was kind of shortchanged, and it was sort of, we got lots and lots of stuff to go through, to get to what they want, really want to go on about, which is sort of what Moffat does, tend, tend to do, um, quite a bit. But it could let, I think Magician Apprentice could really get, be unappreciated as it goes down the line. I don't, I don't think it's that story that does stand well upon its own, but hopefully with the Magician's, uh, sorry, which is familiar, it could improve. So I'm going to wait to see that episode. So thank you very much for watching and bye bye!